In last week's video, I was showing how I make some chess pieces on my rotary axis here on my Gatton CNC. And I had some people message me and ask me if I would show the programming part of that, which I really didn't show in, in last week's video, uh, in VCAR Pro and how I set up the program to make those pieces come out right. So that's what I'm going to do. This is kind of a follow-up video to last week's, and I'll show you that right now. Okay, I've got my VCAR Pro opened here, and I'm going to go through and show you how I program the chess piece, uh, the knight chess piece. I'm going to use that for this example. Uh, so I'm going to start off, I'm going to hit Create New File. My job setup, I'm going to have it as a rotary job, obviously. Uh, the length of my blank is going to be 7 inches and it's going to be 3 inches diameter. That's after I run the rounding tool path and I'll show you how to do that first uh, and you'll need to run that. If you're doing like me and gluing up a, a couple of 2 before or using a square piece of stock, you'll need to run the rounding tool path. So I'll show you that uh, as the first tool path. Uh, the zero position, I want it down the center of the uh, cylinder axis. Uh, I want the um, XY datum on the left. It, it shows here as lower left, but it's actually just means it's going to be on the center of your cylinder and over on the left hand side. My rotary axis runs along the X axis and it wraps along the Y, so that's the radio button I need checked. And I'm going to leave the resolution very high and just use some old pine for this um, demonstration here. So I'll click OK. Then I want to come up here to the model and come down to Import Component 3D Model. I want to go to the, uh, the Knight chess piece that I downloaded from Thingiverse. And as it brings it in, I can see that it is the correct way, orientated the correct way that I want to use it. Uh, you know, if it had been like this, I would have to turn it around because this side is the headstock and over here is the tailstock. And I want, I want it to go this way um, where the headstock's on this end. Uh, I'm not going to need to do any interactive rotation or anything like that. I do need to scale it down though because it's showing the model in inches and the diameter is like over 30 inches so it's really huge so I'm going to change this to millimeter and keep the ratio locked and I can see that that's probably the size that it was designed at originally in Thingiverse. Uh, for the model diameter since my blank is 3 inches I'm going to set the model diameter to be 2.75 inches and you'll notice down here that it changes the model length to 4.2779. I'm going to jot that number down because it'll be handy to remember that here in just a little bit. And then I'm going to click OK. And here is the 3D model. Let me click it around a couple of times so you can get a better view to see the detail a little better. So first thing I'm going to do now is come over to the 2D view and I'm going to uh, come over to my drawing tab and I'm going to draw a rectangle that is, again I mentioned that number a while ago, 4.2779 because that's the overall width of my model and I know from looking at the um, the job setup that the blank is I think 9.4248 or something like that. Well I'm going to set this to 9.6. I'll actually have this overlap a little bit and then click uh, apply. Now I'm going to close this and I'm going to bring this down centered vertically and then I'm going to just use my right arrow key to bring this over over the model and what I'm looking for is I'm going to zoom in right here. I'm just going to keep zooming in until I can't zoom in anymore and I'm going to use my left arrow key now to bring this over. Let me see if I'm, I can still zoom. Okay that's as far as I can zoom and I can't get any closer so I want to get that right on that edge 
of where that model is. So I'll click OK there. And now I've got a vector boundary that's around the, um, the 3D model. The reason I didn't use the, uh, I know somebody's probably thinking, well, why didn't you just use the, uh, come over here to the modeling tab and use create a vector boundary around selected components because it also tries to put one right in there because there's a little bit of a gap right there in the model. So it tries to uh, put one there. So I just make the box like this uh, instead of using that. So now I'm also going to come back to, uh, back here to the drawing tab and I'm going to create another rectangle shape and I'm going to make it three quarter inches wide by, and this time I'm going to overlap this again, it'll be 9.8 um, and make that and now, again, I want to come over here, and while that's highlighted, make sure that it's centered vertically. And then I want to come over here, use my right arrow keys to move it over. And I want to get right here, zoom in as far as I can again. Now I'm using my left arrow key to bring it back over. And I want to keep coming in till it won't let me. Okay, there I can't zoom in anymore. So I'm going to set that one right on that line. And then click OK. Or in the, in the uh, thing there in the screen. Now I'm going to put one on the other side of it. So I'm going to right click, highlight this one. Then right click, hit copy. And then right click again and hit paste. And now I'm going to use the right arrow keys just to move this one over. Again, I'm going to, you can see right here how the model, it's not straight on this side. So this is what I'm looking for, this spot right here. I want to make sure that I get, when I zoom this in until it won't let me go anymore. And I want to get this one right on that line like that. Now I'll just click in there and we're done okay so I've got two pockets that I'm going to use are these rectangles I'm going to use for pockets on each end and then I've got the model with a vector boundary around it so now I'm ready to put the tool pass on but like I mentioned earlier before I do the the tool pass to actually create the model I will show you how to create the uh, the rounding tool pass so that if you're starting out with a square you can turn it into a cylinder uh, before. Uh, so I'm going to come down here to gadgets and come down to wrapping hit create rounding tool path. My blank that I've got glued up is a two two befores which make a three inch square and then it's seven inches long. I want to use the optimized raster which machines the corners off first for my tool I'm going to click select and I'm going to highlight a quarter inch end mill um, let's see what these settings are 1 8 depth that looks good 150 inches a minute plunge 30 all that looks good so I'm going to select that and okay now you can see that when it gets done it should be a cylinder 7 inches by 3 inches so I hit OK and when I do that, you can see that it automatically puts the rounding tool path over here for me. So you'll want to run it separately um, with uh, before you, you know, if you're starting out with a square, you'll want, want to run that separately uh, before you do your other tool pass. Now let's put this, some other tool pass on here. Let's see if I can get this a little bigger. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight this rectangle here on the left hand side and I'm going to hold down the shift key and highlight the the other one as well and I'm going to come over here to the tool path operation and hit the pocket tool path and I want this to come start at zero and do a cut depth of one inch um, it's going to use the quarter inch end mill same one I used for the rounding tool path um, you could do this either way. I have it set to offset. 
uh, and cutting conventional and I think that's yeah that's all I need to check there I'm just gonna leave this called pocket one and I'll hit the calculate and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to preview that toolpath so you can see what it's going to look like as it as it does those toolpaths there and basically it's just creating a little relief but still leaving plenty of material there so it won't break out the headstock is going to be over here on the left the live center in the tailstock is going to be over here on the right and there's still plenty of uh, plenty of meat there to, to hold everything solid while it's while it's turning this 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 what's left right here is, is exactly the width of the model so that's how that first tool path will look so we'll close this out now and yeah, well and I want to come back to the 2d and we'll turn those off now I'm going to highlight the model hold the shift key down and also hit the vector boundary that I put around it and we're going to come over here and do the 3D finishing tool path or I'm sorry the 3 uh, the rough 3D roughing tool path and again I'm going to use the same quarter inch end mill that I already have in there I'm going to tell it to use the uh, limit boundary of the selected vector uh, I've got a 20 thousandths machining allowance. It's going to rough using the Z levels roughing strategy and it's going to go back and forth along the X axis. And I think that's all I need there. I'm going to leave that called 3D roughing one and hit calculate. Okay, so now we've got this tool pass showing here. So with, uh, we're going to uh, preview that one. That quarter inch bit is hogging out all the material it can you know all, every place it can get in and you can see here that it's got all these different layers that the finishing tool path will come back and clean up this tool path um, shows about 41 minutes and if I remember correctly I think that's probably about right may have even taken a little bit longer um, than that for the roughing tool pass. So we'll close that one out. Now I'm going to come back to my 2D view again. I've still got my 3D model highlighted as well as that vector boundary. And I'm now going to come over and hit the 3D finishing tool path. And for this, I'm going to use a 1 8 inch tapered ball nose that has a 1 16 tip on it. So I'm going to get some pretty good detail. It's going to use the selected vector as the boundary, just like we did with the roughing tool pass. For this one, I use the raster machine strategy, and I'm using a 90 degree. So instead of the, the x-axis going back and forth, it's going to be doing the little step over, and the rotary axis will be turning from 0 to 360 and back again. So I'm going to calculate that one. And this one will take a minute as it does all those complex computations. Thank God for Vectric software because I sure wouldn't be able to, uh, to figure out all these moves without it. So now I'm going to come back and we're going to preview this toolpath. And there you can see, like I said, it's going, instead of the x-axis going back and forth, it's the rotary that's doing the turns and the x-axis is just doing the step over. You could do it the other way if you wanted to. I just tried it this way and it worked out pretty well. So uh, that's the way I'm showing you here. So here is the finish uh, thing when it's done here and you can see what I really like about this is I've now got a flat edge to put my um, 
Japanese flush trim saw against so I can get that cut off nice and straight as well as I can put it up against the base of the knight and get all this cut off so there's not really you know on the base there was literally no sanding I had to do there and when I cut this off right here it was just just a you know touching it up with a little bit of sandpaper and that was uh, that was pretty much it so that's going to do it for the vectory part of this I hope um, I hope you understood everything and if you don't be sure and leave me a, a question down in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you okay if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and hit the little bell there beside the subscribe button and you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video and until the next time we'll see you later thank you very much for watching